everyone and welcome to the Pottery Corner, my studio down on the south coast of England near Chichester. Uh, today we are doing another glaze kiln fire opening um, and I just wanted to introduce you to my studio dog. This is Sissy and she is um, a pug cross and she is my constant companion in the studio. And uh, um, I'd really like to know who your constant companion in your studio is, if you have one. And also, it would be great to know where you're viewing from. So in the comments below, send me a comment. Let me, let, send me a picture of your studio friend. Um, and, you know, I love having Sissy in the studio because I talk to myself all the time. And if she's in the studio, it doesn't really matter if I talk to myself because actually I'm talking to Sissy. So say... See you later, everybody. I don't usually stand her on the kiln, but it's completely cold. Mwah. Anyway, I thought you might like to just be introduced to the studio dog. So we're doing a glazed kiln fire opening again. Uh, the kiln is completely cold uh, because it was cold yesterday. So I do know that it is completely cold before I start handling anything. Uh, I'll try and whiz through it because there's a bit that's you know, we can just get through really quickly. These are just some beads that Joe has made um, in craft crank. So they go this lovely biscuit color when they're not glazed. So those are those. Now in the very top of the kiln uh, is a piece by Emma, uh, which we have been slightly, well, not worried about, but slightly concerned about because large flat items in the kiln are always very um vulnerable so this is a mirror this is the bottom piece that's going to hang from the bottom so a nice um i was going to say a treble clef but i'm not sure it is a treble clef i think it's a whatever else the other one is uh so this um emma is going to uh put a mirror behind now it's it's sitting on quite a lot of um sand silicon sand because because it's large and flat but this, so this is this piece is going to have a mirror behind. So, and this is all Emma's design. Isn't it beautiful? Lovely flower on it and a kingfisher, um, pomegranate and a bee, all sorts. I hope you can see that quite well, actually, because I'm going to stand really close to the camera so that you can see it. And it looks like a Russian dancer. I don't know that it is, but it looks Russian to me. Um, so that's come out really nicely. And that is... Um, that's a combination of underglazes and amico glazes and mako glazes. So there's quite a lot going on on there. Um, some of the sort of um, this type of detail is done in underglaze. Um, this is uh, amico's cobalt on there. So anyway, a very nice piece. And I'm very glad that it's uh, made it through the kiln in one piece. So I'm just going to very carefully pop that over there. It would be nice to see the finished article, Emma. Um, when you put the mirror behind so uh, when she sends me a photo I'll pop that I'm just going to get rid of this as you can see there's quite a lot of silicon sand on the shelf itself which I can recycle uh, so nothing ever gets wasted uh, right so next in the kiln just get rid of the props if you don't like those um this is one of Louise's plates she's done a series of plates so this is blue lagoon under amico sorry amico blue lagoon under sapphire float um, and we had one of these in the last kiln opening it's it's beautiful it's almost like a a starry galaxy sky very very nice i mean the back as is always the way the backs are sometimes better than the fronts i don't know why that is it might just be the heat that they get from the from the kiln shelf but nonetheless another lovely dish and that's got ancient jasper just on the rim um just to break the the um texture you know break up the color a little bit so that it's not all completely one color so that's a lovely thing um, I'll talk about those in a minute, get rid of those. Right, next shelf out and we will see what we have in here. Okay, right. So next, again props out, this is a platter by Diane which has got bees on it. But I have to say her bees look a little bit like wasps, 
probably one too many stripes of black. She's used um, uh, one of my textured rollers that has this um, honeycomb pattern on it. Um, she's used marigold on the back and again I'll just have to knock that cookie off. That's the reason I use them so they don't stick to the kiln shelves as you know. Um, but I think her bees are a little bit waspy for my my liking but nonetheless a nice platter. Uh, again, I'll talk about that in a minute. This is another one of yours, Louise, and again, that's lovely. In fact, the, the sort of the, the galaxy bit on the top is, is nice on that one, and indeed nice on the bottom again. So yes, that's a goodie. Very nice. Hope you can see that. It's really lovely, speckly texture. So that's the Amoco's Blue Lagoon underneath uh, Sapphire Float. This next one is my sister's, and I know my sister watches my videos, so hello Carol. Uh, this is your planter for the bathroom, actually very nice. Uh, I can work out what it is. It looks like, um, it looks like mulberry to me. I'm, I'm just going to have to knock that, again, knock that off of there. They're really easy to remove. Um, she's trying to match it up with some material that she's using in her bathroom. Actually, very successfully, I would say, because it looks almost the same tone as the material, if I remember it rightly. So this is a slab-built um, plant pot, um, just with some nice, uh, unique textures from the textured sprigs that I make. And if you want to know how to do those, um, there is a, I believe it's a Top Tip Tuesday video. So if you look up the Pottery Corners YouTube channel, You'll find that video which will tell you how I go about making these um, textures. It's really nice to use your own texture so that it's not commercially bought and you don't see 50,000 versions of it on Instagram. Right, so bottom shelf. Let's see what we've got in here. And what shall I start with? What is that? Oh, that's interesting. Right, okay, so we did some mocha, we, we had a test of mocha diffusion a few weeks ago. I haven't posted any stuff on it because we were just giving it a go. But the um, the biscuit version of this vase, which had had the copper mocha diffusion, so you can see where that copper has just um, reacted there with the green there. But when I biscuit fired it, so this is slip, this is green slip, uh, with copper mocha diffusion, but the copper mocha diffusion burnt off in the biscuit firing, which was a bit of a shock. Um, so I've just kind of put in a pattern using Amico's Cosmic Tea Dust. What a lovely name that is. Um, and I've just kind of just, it's one of those, let's just fire it and see what the slip color comes out like. And actually the slip color is really nice. This is, um, uh, lime green uh, slip that I've made. Beautiful colour actually, it's really nice um, and I don't mind the design. So from a very unusable pot to a usable pot, so quite pleased with that. That's quite pretty. Uh, a couple more props just to get out. And going back to my sister's bathroom, she has made a light pull. So this is going to have the you know the light to pull through and again done it in the same in the same color glaze so that'll look really nice actually it's really nice carol so that will go nicely with your pot which it matches and this is your other pot here which again i might have to knock the knock the bottom off now i do know what this is because she's written it down for me uh Two coats of Blue Midnight, two coats of oatmeal, and three, two coats of Rainforest. I'm not too sure whether that's that, but if it had Rainforest on it underneath, the Rainforest has got lost. So we might be refiring this. Actually, I quite like the colour. It's kind of almost a mustard. Well, you can see it's kind of mustard because it kind of goes with my shirt. Quite nice, not quite sure what that started life as from what she's written down here. It looks like two coats of Blue Midnight with one coat of oatmeal. 
I think it's got oatmeal on it. It looks like it's got oatmeal on it. Anyway, um, we might be refiring that because she might add some more glaze and see if we can get it to run a bit better. Right, this is... <laughs> I was just playing again with my new slips, which I have made. I wanted to see what colour the blues came out, so I just drizzled some on this little sort of cup that I that I threw very quickly. And actually, these um, slip colours are really very nice. This is Robin's Egg. Uh, this one is um, Turquoise. And this one is what they call Peacock Blue, which is quite lovely. It's like a petrol, petrol blue. So um, that's just a little, just a little slip tester. I'll probably use it as a pen pot or similar. I'll just get out. I'll explain what these are in a minute. I just wanted to. Oh, now that's very interesting. Okay, right. So Carolyn made some uh, bowls, which um, if we get the one down off of the shelf that has not yet gone into the firing very very this is very interesting although not what she wanted so she started with this shape with this um, base in a sort of a half moon shape but interestingly the weight of the top in the glaze firing has almost completely straightened that out look so the the, the bend that was in that piece after it was biscuit fired has gone. Um, this is jade inside, Amoco's jade, and on the outside we have um, seaweed over obsidian. Quite like that. I'm going to have to knock this cookie off because obviously we had thought that it was going to stay um, uh, bent and she's glazed underneath here. But actually, that isn't stuck on in very many places, so we'll hope that it, it makes a, a quick tap and uh, exits from the piece. But obviously, the weight of the item on top of that um, semicircle is too heavy. So it's actually just pushed it right the way down. Now, this is the large version. Interestingly... <laughs> The large version, which has got a bigger bowl on the top, has got a slight, um, if I stand it on something flat, it's got a very slight bend still in it. I hope you can see that. Um, and again, the glazing is the same. So this is obsidian, Amoco's obsidian with seaweed over. Nice colour on the outside. The dripping's nice on it, Carolyn. The inside, so she's going to plant this with succulents, so we don't have to worry too much about the inside. Uh, but the base is better on this one, but I suspect this piece of um, clay is just not strong enough to hold the rest of the bowl up. Now, um, these test tiles that are here, um, I've just made some textured cookies, which again, I think I've explained in another video. Um, and I've used a transparent base glaze and added one gram, this is one gram, two grams, three grams, four grams of um, a mason stain or a, a pigment, high fire pigment stain. Um, this one is lime green. So actually what's interesting about this is that obviously the more powder you put in, the, t the more opaque the tile will become. Actually, I quite like this slightly off transparent colour and the two grams that's two grams per 10 grams of powder so in other words 20 percent so 20 uh, um 20 stain to 100 percent um, glaze powder so this is one gram of stain with 10 grams of glaze powder and this is two grams of stain with 10 grams of stain powder um, of glaze powder but interesting that you can actually see some of these are more successful than others the red one is horrid so we shall not be mixing our stains with red stains the blue ones again they've not come out very well that is that is the one gram so obviously that um, cornflower blue uh, high fire stain is very potent because you almost can't see through that. That's almost come out like Amoco's cobalt. 
um, an awful lot cheaper than Amico's Cobalt, obviously. Um, and these are the um, High Fire Pink. Again, that's one gram per 10 grams. That's two grams per 10 grams. Nice and shiny. Hmm. Um, definitely not three grams. Nasty. Um, and again, the violet. So that's... Uh, actually, that's two grams of violet. I didn't do a one gram of violet, clearly, because there isn't one in here. It's two grams of violet. Uh, three grams of violet. And again, the four grams. It's too, it's too opaque. It almost has gone matte. So I'm just playing with um, making some glaze colours of my own, basically because the Amoco and Mako glazes are getting so expensive um, that, you know, they're pricing, almost pricing themselves out of the market uh, with brush on glazes. So I thought I'd have a go and see what would happen if I made my own. So that's quite interesting. Um, so that's your lot for today. Um, happy potting everybody. Uh, do let me know if you have a studio pet. Put it in the comments. Tell me where you're watching from. I'd really like to know. Um, have a look at the website for people who are local, want to know about courses and things. Um, and there's also my work available for purchase in my online shop. So that is www.thepotterycorner.co.uk. On Instagram, we are the.pottery.corner and on Facebook, it's The Pottery Corner. So stay safe, everybody. It's a bit alarmed about the thought of a second wave of coronavirus, but we're still very happy with the students in the studio at the moment. So long may it continue, and I look forward to welcoming them back. That's all from me. Bye for now.